Hello, Mass 6, Mrs. Spence here. This week we are looking at inequality. So we are moving from equations that produce just one solid solution to inequalities that produce a range of solutions that satisfy the inequality. So what we are gonna start with is by checking possible solutions using either substitution or solving. And then we're gonna translate some of these verbal phrases into inequalities to solve. All right, so let's look at this inequality that we have here. X minus six is less than nine. All right, less than because the alligator wants the bigger snack and it's turning its back on the item that is less than the nine because it's not big enough. And we're gonna start by substituting. So substituting is like evaluating. Remember, you just plug in these questionable solutions here and see if they make the inequality true. All right, because we're looking for a number that we take six from and still make it less than nine. All right, so that's our goal here. So I'm gonna write our inequality here. Oops. It's got to stay less than nine. All right, and we're gonna just start plugging in different numbers for this X. So we're checking five first. So five minus six, is that less than nine? Five minus six, we have a war going on here, positive and a negative. The negatives are gonna win by one. Or if you have $5, but you wanna buy something for six, you're gonna owe somebody a dollar. Is negative one less than nine? Yes, I would rather have $9 than owe somebody a dollar. So five is a possible solution for this inequality. All right, so we're gonna do that with all of our, um, all of our solutions here that we're checking. So I'm just going to plug in where that X was, every single one of these solutions. All right, so now we have negative two minus six. We have a party of negatives, so we're gonna be negative in the end, and there's eight of them. Is negative eight less than nine? Again, I would rather have $9 than owe somebody eight. So yes, that is a possible solution. All right, let's try six. Hmm, six minus six is zero. Is that less than nine? Yes, it is. So we have another solution here. All right, how about 15? Okay, 15 minus six, that is nine. Is that less than nine? No. All right, so this one, we do not have a true statement. Nine is not less than nine, nine is equal to nine. Now, if we had had this, symbol less than or equal to, we could say, yes, it is a solution because of the equal to part, but because that's missing in this inequality, it is not a solution. So 15 does not work. All right, let's try the next one. The next one is 16. 16 minus six is 10. Is that less than nine? No. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going here. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Is that less than 9? Yes, it is. Negative 4. And some of you might be spotting a pattern here. And that's great analyzation skills. Let's see if you catch it before I say it in a minute. All right, we have a party of negatives. So we're going to have negative 10. Is that less than 9? Yes, it is. And then the last one, one, one minus six. I have a dollar, I wanna buy something for six. That's gonna make me owe somebody $5. It is less than nine. So it is a solution as well. All right, so you will see that this one that we did here, the 15, that was kind of our cutoff point because that produced this statement, right? So because it wasn't equal, it was the closest thing we can come to it. So anything above, Above that number, that breaking point, like 16, would not be a solution. But everything below that number 15 was a solution. Let's try one more here. What about if I 15 is below 12? So let's try that theory. 12 minus 6. This one should work because it's below that breaking point of 15, and it does work. 
All right, so let's go one, uh, we already did one above. Let's go two above and check that. So let's go to 17. 17 minus six, 11. That is not less than nine, so that truly does not work. So yes, if you find the breaking point that makes your inequality almost true, then go down from that or up from that, depending on which inequality symbol you have. That's a hack or a trick, kind of a shortcut that you can take. All right, the other way that you can check if solutions are, or excuse me, if numbers are a possible solution is to actually solve the inequality. And now that you know how to solve one-step algebraic um, equations, you can solve one-step algebraic inequalities as well. All right, so let's check this method, which might feel a whole lot like le much less work. All right, so we need to isolate the x. We need to move that negative 6, so we need to do the opposite, add 6. What we do to one side, we do to the other. That cancels, leaving us with x is less than, and we solve this, 15. So we saw that up here. Remember, that was our breaking point. So we need any number less than 15 will work, will be possible solutions. And we learned that to show that these, all the numbers that could be possible solutions without having to do this or listing every single number. Remember, we did sample sets. So can't be 15, but it can be 14, and it can be 13, and it can be 12, and it can be 11, and it can be 10, all the way down to all the negative infinities, okay? That would be considered our possible solution. So mathematicians are like, you don't have to write every single number to negative infinity. You can graph it on a number line and show all the numbers by continuing your arrow out. So we are going to go to, oh, our number line is not big enough. All right, let's add a number line part on it here real quick. Sorry. Let's extend this number line. 11, 12, 13, 14, ooh, and 15. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so what we would do is we would come to our solution that we found, 15, it's going to get an open circle because it cannot include 15 in its answer. It just needs to come right up close to it. And so it gets the open circle. And then all the numbers less than 15 would be these, 14, 12, 13, 12, all the way down to 1, and even further with our negatives. So if we had had our 0, and then negative one, it would include all the negatives as well, which we saw. Five would be in this solution set. Negative two would be as well. Um, six, yep, it's shaded. 15, not a solution because it's the open circle. 16, definitely not a solution. It's on the wrong side. It's not shaded, but three is, and negative four is, and one is as well. So we can see that our substitution, we are accurate in that. But some of you may be like, hey, I like solving for algebraic equations. I can do it with my inequalities as well. And then I can look at this. And what I say about analyze is go ahead and solve it, graph it, or even if you're just looking at this, I need any number less than 15 and it'll work. So I come up here and I say, well, that's not less than 15 and that's not less than 15, but everything else is, then you could have solved it that way without substituting and plugging in every single one. So just choose whichever way works for you. All right, so we're going to now look at translating some inequalities here. So you see this from your notes, and this looks like the one that we used for equations as well. And you would be right about that. Get this off of here. Okay, so the thing that we need to do is just know what these keywords stand for or which inequality symbol they stand for. So we have um, these, let me look at and zoom in here. We have these inequality symbols, less than or equal to, just plain old less than. And then we have greater than or equal to and just plain old greater than. All right, and then these are the keywords that go with those. So 
this is going to be very helpful for you. Um, I can say that definitely translating inequalities is more challenging than equations because it kind of sometimes feels like a brain trip. Things get flipped and it feels awkward. So I highly recommend using your keyword sheet here to help you. And the more you do, the more natural it will become. So have that handy anytime you're translating these inequalities. Okay, and let's just look at a couple of examples here and use your keyword sheet over there. Okay, so we have the quotient of x and 3 is less than or equal to, so this one's very clear on which one we're using. Is is our keyword also, because what does is mean? That means that we have a solution coming up. Okay. So it was an equal sign for us before, but this is a trigger for us. And I want you to really remember that if you see is less than or equal to, that's telling you instead of less than, remember less than can also be a keyword for or key phrase for subtraction. So how do we know when it's an inequality and when it's subtraction? And it's this word right here. So is remembers a keyword for equation to us, but what it needs to be is it's an a keyword for a solution is coming. All right, so that means we're talking about less than or equal to, not just subtraction. All right, so that's going to be the biggest key in determining that. Same thing with more than. All right, um, so let's look at, I'm going to erase, I kind of wrote all over everything. Let's look at this. So the quotient, that's division, of x and 3 is less than or equal to, so less than or equal to five. All right, so we need to rearrange a little bit here. We see that we're gonna need to put this guy in between here and you can write it either this way or you could write it like this, whichever way. Okay, and now we can solve this. So we're gonna go ahead and solve it. We have division here to move that three, we would need to times. And that leaves us with X, that's supposed to be a three, <laughs> um, is less than or equal to 15. Okay, let's look at this one. The difference between, difference between X and four is greater than 10. Okay. So this one's just as simple is greater than. So is is telling us, hey, a solution is coming. So this is greater than is this symbol here. Or we know that the thing they're talking about is larger or greater than 10. So we're going to make our alligator open up to the greater thing. And then we just need to slide that in. There are no keywords um, for flipping. So it's just X minus four is greater than 10. And we can solve this one too. Got to move the negative four by adding four to both sides. X is now greater than 14. So any number that is greater than 14 will be a solution to this inequality that we just created. All right, one more. The product of, so multiplication, X and seven is not greater than, hmm, solution coming, not greater than, so that would be less than, and this is the symbol for less than, 21. All right, now, it's not greater than 21, but could it equal 21? Yes, it can. And that's one thing we need to be checking with all these. This one told us less than or equal to. That was very simple. But this one, and let me go back to this one, is greater than 10. It's got to be bigger than 10. Can it be 10? No. All right. Well, what about if it says is not greater than? That means it's less than, but can it be 21? It can be. It can be 21, just not bigger. All right. So that's how you analyze those. But if you use your keywords, you'll see it over there. All right, and then we just need to slide these in the right spot. Now, you can either do x times 7, or we know that putting 7x is the same thing. 
is less than or equal to 21. And we can solve this one as well. Let's disconnect that multiplication with division to both sides. And we get x is less than or equal to 3. So any number that is 3 or smaller will work in this situation. All right. Have fun practicing yours.